In this video, I'm going to show you a problem that will happen if the phenomena that we are forecasting has a trend. The next forecast, the forecast for the next time bucket, is a percentage of the last actual that we have had, uh, and the rest comes from the last and as you can see here let's say if alpha is 30 percent then for the next forecast we will get 30 percent of our last actual and 70 percent of our last forecast in my other videos I, I have used the alternative formula for the exponential forecast i use this one here for a specific reason here of course, we don't have any forecast for the first time bucket because we don't have any evidence yet. Uh, for the second time bucket, our best forecast would be our last actual, obviously. There is no previous forecast. And starting from here, for the third week, we have, ha we have some actuals and some forecasts. And let's assume that alpha is 30 percent okay so our forecast for time bucket three would be alpha percent of our last actual which is 12 and we have to add with that one minus alpha percent of our last forecast okay so that is our forecast for the uh, week time bucket three now if i want if i don't want to type the formula again and again my alpha is always in cell b3 so i'm going to make this cell B3 an absolute address. Uh, so when I copy the formula, it doesn't change. And now I can simply copy this formula and I get all of the forecasts. So like, of, of course, we have all of these past actuals. We are just doing a simulation to see how good the forecast would be if we would use uh, exponential forecasting with alpha 0.3 but we see a problem here like look at this <clears throat> when we forecasted the next week to be 10 the actual end up ended up to be 12 when we forecast that time bucket 3 demand will be 10.6 it turns out to be 13 and when we forecast that it would be 13 it turns out to be 18 and so basically as you can see all the time our our forecast is uh, underestimating the actual demand and this problem happens because this actual has a trend so let me show you what's the problem the problem is that this actual is not really a you know a stable phenomena the phenomena has a trend yeah so this is our observation and they are growing and uh, all the time the demand is growing and if i combine the two you will see what is happening the blue dots are our actuals and the forecasts they are shown in red and the problem is that every time that at the end of let's say week uh, two i'm predicting week three uh, my forecasts end up to be an underestimation of the demand because you're not considering the fact that this is a phenomena with trend. Um, we use mean square error 
to to find the optimum alpha. So here I will calculate the error and the error of each forecast would be actual minus the forecast. Okay, so these are my errors. And my error square are And my mean squared error in this case is the average of my squared errors, obviously. So with a mean uh, with an alpha of 0 0.3, I have a mean squared error of 12.26. Now let's see if we can enhance our error or reduce our error by including the trend in our calculations, okay? So the method uh, that we will use is called um, trend adjusted exponential smoothing forecast or Exponential smoothing forecast, including the trend. Different authors use different ways to refer to this correction method that we are going to deal with. And the idea is that every real forecast, every forecast that we will announce or we will, is our final forecast, let's call it our exponential smoothing forecast including trend so so idea is that our exponential smoothing forecast including trend will be whatever our forecast let's say for time bucket t plus one what would be our forecast for time t plus one, plus a consideration of trend that we will calculate for time t plus one. So this is how it will go. And for every forecast for time t plus one, now with uh, consideration of the trend, there would be a tiny difference in our calculation. So we will consider alpha times the actual of our last observation plus one minus alpha times, uh, instead of just simply relying on forecast, we would rely on, uh, on our previous exponential forecast that includes the trend for the previous time bucket. And uh, obviously the previous uh, exponential forecast, including the, the trend is alpha percent of our actual, of our last actual and one minus alpha. And of course the previous exponential forecast, forecast including trend would be the forecast plus the trend of the previous calculation. Now, the question is, how do we calculate this? Uh, how are we going to calculate this factor, which is a new factor that we are adding to our calculations? And the way that we do that, is when we want to calculate the trend that we will include for the next prediction, we will consider a proportion of the increase in the forecast that we are getting. Uh, so here we will consider the 
the difference between the new forecast that we have and the past forecast that we had. So this gives us how much our forecast have grown. Uh, and uh, then we will add the rest of the proportion, one minus beta. And then we will consider uh, one minus beta, a percentage of what was our last trend that we observed. So basically the new trend for future would be a percentage of the past trend that we observe and a percentage of the increase in forecast. When we are starting to forecast the phenomenon, there is no forecast for the first observation or first week, no trend and nothing. But for the second time bucket, our forecast is whatever we observe. And the first trend, we have not seen any trend yet. So trend is zero. And if I want exponential forecast, including the trend, this would not be very exciting, but this is where we will implement the formula. So what would be the trend adjusted exponential forecast in this case? There is no trend. So it would be my exponential forecast. So yeah, this thing is very trivial so, now, so far. Now let's go to the next time bucket. Now my forecast, instead of like notice that my forecast right now is my alpha multiplied by my last actual one minus alpha multiplied by my last forecast. And notice that my last forecast is C6, okay? Now, but in the new, formula, we are not going to rely on the last forecast. We are going to rely simply on the last trend adjusted forecast, okay? And this is our last trend adjusted forecast, okay? So nothing special here. Now, but we have to find the trend. There is now a trend. And for trend, we need a, a coefficient. A what percentage of the, the change in the forecast and what percentage of the last trend we are going to consider? Let's say we go for a beta of 40%. Um, okay. So here, the trend that we are calculating would be a percentage of, or beta percentage of, so in this case 0.4, of the difference or the growth that we are observing in our forecast. Our forecast is growing. So if, if the forecast is growing, we will consider that growth in our next forecast. That seems that to be a trend. But we will consider 40% of that increase in the forecast, in inclusion in the future forecast. And then, and we add to that one minus the beta percent of the previous trend. In this case, the previous trend is zero. Notice that this is an implementation of this formula, beta percent of the difference in our forecast or the growth in the forecast and one minus beta percent of the, uh, the previous trend, okay? However, notice that we want this, uh, uh, the D3 will remain D3 all the time. Our, our beta is in cell D3. So we just make it an absolute address so I don't have to type the formula again and again. And now I can simply copy this formula down. Uh, now, so this is the trend. This is the exponential forecast, but notice that the exponential forecast, instead of relying on the, uh, on the last forecast, it's relying on the last uh, exponential smoothing, including the trend forecast that we have had. So let me show you that. 
to see that in the in this formula we are using 30 percent of last actual and 70 percent of the last exponential uh, forecast including trend and to see this one we are calculating 40 percent of the difference okay maybe i remove those and for trend we are uh, using 40 percent of the growth in the forecast and 60 percent of the previous trend in this case it is zero my, my next exponential forecast including trend is this new exponential forecast plus this trend that i'm predicting that will happen now i have to go to the next forecast next forecast is now like the traditional forecast let's see this is not what we want it uses uh, 30 percent of last actual and 70 percent of my last forecast this is not what we want to do so we are going to change it this would be uh, 30 percent of my last actual and 70 percent of not c7 i want my last exponential forecast including trend so it comes from here And the trend, you know, we just simply can copy the trend down. And the result, of course, is the summation of the trend. Let me show you. The result is the summation of the forecast uh, plus the forecast of the trend. Notice that this forecast is a little bit different than usual uh, exponential forecasting ignoring the trend now the 30 percent comes from actual and 70 percent comes from exponential forecasting including the trend okay and because i was careful and i included the everything that should be absolute and everything that shouldn't i can simply copy these formulas down And now we have our uh, exponential forecasts with uh, um, uh, inclusion of the trend line. And now you notice that with this kind of forecasting, our mean squared error of this new set of forecasts that I have uh, is much better. Uh, the amount of error is less mean squared error. And if I want to predict, I would simply rely on the method that I have chosen. Of course, we don't know what is the actual for week uh, eight, but we can do a prediction. Our prediction for the next week, considering all of the trend and everything, would be 